Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and otherwise. I'm Lamar Haven. Welcome to Diablo 3, the Reaper of Souls update. Now, this is update 2.0 to Diablo 3. Don't let the numbers confuse you. <laughs> but what this means is that the system has been completely changed to up to upgrade to the expansion of the game now this video isn't talking about content that is with the expansion this is to talk about changes to the game that have been made that you will experience even without the expansion now many things have changed right off the back bat first of all on the left of the menu you would normally see let's return to game you would normally see at some place in, not just left of the menu but probably anywhere a menu that would indicate the real money auction house the much controversial feature of the game that made it so that if you wanted to collect loot you could do so from buying from other players and you could even buy said loot with real money that auction house is completely gone not just the real money side but the other side where you could buy with in-game earnable gold completely gone it ha the loot system has been completely revamped in response to this. However, I'm going to go through some of the patch notes more piece by piece to get uh, to give you a full idea of what's going on. Now, there are many class there are many class changes that have occurred that we will not be uh, looking at right away. Those are balanced things, and those are changes to specific classes that, if you're interested in, I would recommend checking the patch notes yourselves and going over those balanced things yourself. Crafting and Artisans. Crafting has received several quality of life changes. There are now two separate types of materials. Materials you use from levels 1 to 60, which is the level cap without the expansion, and then materials you use from 60 to 70. As you can see, I'm level 60 because I don't have the expansion. 60 to 70 is the level cap with the expansion. It will reduce the amount of stash space they can uh, crafting materials consume, and all your stuff that you already had if you already played this game, all your stash bay, all your, I'm sorry, crafting materials have been converted, so you're good. Uh, they, it also mentions that when you craft items, it uses the new Loot 2.0 Smart Drop System. Don't let the overly complicated name confuse you. All the loot system means is that if loot drops, I hear I am a demon hunter, loot will drop that a demon hunter can use. That's all it means. So the, uh, this character will find loot that a demon hunter will use more often than they'll find loot that other characters can use. Now that doesn't say other loot won't drop. Other loot will drop, but you'll be able to give it to other characters if you want. Just more commonly, loot that you can use can will drop. Uh, the difficulty systems have been completely changed. Normally, if I were to say go to game settings, I would change what the difficulty level of my game was, and it would be Acts 1 through 4, say. You'd go to Acts 1 through 4, and on normal difficulty. Then you'd go to, to uh, Nightmare difficulty, Acts 1 through 4 again. Then you'd go to uh, the next difficulty, Hell, Acts 1 through 4 again. That's been removed. That now difficulty is dynamic. It'll always be one, one playthrough of the game, say, if you're playing the normal, like I've said, without the expansion, then it'll just be, you know, let's go into the game and I'll show you. Let's resume. I'm going to create my own private game. And what happens is, instead of having to play through the game three different times in different difficulties, and then unlocking Inferno and playing through the game a fourth time, you'll play through the game once, and the difficulty will change dynamically. Then, as you gain loot and experience in playing that, you can up the difficulty and gain a ton more rewards. I have new skills available. <laughs> and I could use a town portal. We're ignoring that for now. That's not what I want to show you at the moment. Uh, another change that I wanted to mention is, see here, the Enchantress is my partner in crime. She is now level 60. The Your followers now level up with you. And the typical tutorial stuff is showing up because I haven't played this game for many months. And what that means is... Yes, I'll I'll work on that in a minute, Enchantress. What that means is you don't have to grind levels for your poor little minions anymore. The minions you gain are now level up with you and you can swap them out as to whoever's useful. Um, 
So normal, hard, and expert are the difficulties that are available from the beginning. Master difficulty unlocks after you complete Act 4, which is a harder, even harder difficulty. Torment unlocks upon reaching max level. And Torment level, it also has its own difficulty slider that you can move. And the higher you go, the more rewards you get. You can lower your difficulty settings in-game, but you can't increase it from in-game. You have to leave. So let's go to events. Uh, okay, thank you for achievement. What's that do? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I apparently have read a lot of books. So it, cursed objects can occur now. Chests and shrines around Sanctuary now have a chance to be cursed, starting an event once they're inspected. The, uh, completing an event earns you a gold and experience reward, as well as a radiant chest or some other random shrine buff. And it's just another random event. Infernal Machine, which is a way to get really, really good equipment, but face really tough enemies, is only available on Torment difficulty. So I talked about uh, Loop 2.0 a little bit. It All items that drop have a chance to roll as smart loot. <laughs> Ignore the random achievements. <laughs> smart loot items roll intelligently based on your character being played. For, like I said before, class specific items will no longer roll stats that are inappropriate for their class. I think I have a way to demonstrate that. Paragon, we'll get to that. There's a chess piece that this one doesn't isn't specifically it. There are say a chess piece that's specific to your class that only like a demon hunter can wear. Only demon hunter stats will be on it, always. So smart loot has a chance to drop all the time, and smart loot will always drop when it is a class specific item. Items properties have been changed. There are primary stats and secondary stats. I'll let you look up exactly which ones are which, but uh, when as it's split up, stats that directly increase your power and stats that are just good situationally are now in different slots. So you don't always have to say, well, I just want the primary stat all the time. Now you get a choice. Uh, stat ranges have been significantly narrowed. Let's say this here had a stat range of it could have given me one dexterity, it could have given me 200 dexterity. I got 186. What if I only got a one? Then this item would be useless. Now stat ranges are different. In fact, I believe if I hold control, you can see the stat range on the piece of loot. You will see that when this piece of loot dropped, it got random rolls on all of its stats. And here's what it show, uh, what it could have rolled. For strength, it was 72 to 77. For dexterity, it was 170 to 200. So that way, if you find the same piece of loot, it won't be exactly the same stats. So if you hold control, you can always see what could have rolled on those stats, which is a very neat feature. I really like that. Um, so that, um, also potions. Potions are all the same now. It doesn't matter what potion you have. It doesn't matter uh, how strong it was. All potions now instantly restore 60% life. Nice quality of life change there. Ooh, I think they improved the UI on hatred and discipline. Very interesting. All right, so monsters now have new suffixes and affixes, I think they're called, where sometimes they can be, uh, they can now be have... Arcane Enchanted, Desecrator, Frozen, Jailer, Vortex, Mortar, Plague, that kind of thing. All those things have been changed. There have been some that are added for Frozen Pulse, Orbiter, Poison Enchanted, Thunderstorm, Wormhole. I would explain this all to you and go through exactly what each one does, but I think you're better served what, playing the game and finding out what those mean for yourself. Those aren't really a feature that's like, ooh, I want to play now that there's more suffixes to the enemies. I think it's more interesting that you find out that there are new ones. Go find out what they do and get your face killed by that. So Paragon. Paragon 2.0 is what they're calling it. Paragon leveling system has been completely revamped. Before, all it did is every time you were at max level and then you gained Paragon experience. And for every level of Paragon, you would get more magic find and more gold find, I think. And now it's, there's no longer a cap to how many Paragon levels. It used to be 100. Obviously, I'm not there. Paragon levels are now account-wide and shared across all characters. That means... Uh, but that is split between normal characters and hardcore characters. For those of you that don't know, hardcore characters are characters who, if they die, you they're gone forever. 
But if they gain Paragon levels, then the Paragon levels do go pass on to the next characters. Um, Paragon levels are account wide, shared between everybody. Uh, players no longer gain static bonuses upon uh, gaining Paragon levels, and bonuses currently earned by players have been removed. You now earn Paragon points. So I'm going to click on this and show you. I have two unspent points in core, two unspent points in offense, one unspent point in defense, one unspent point in utility. Now, every single character I have, not just max level ones, have these points. And every time you gain a Paragon level, you'll gain a point in one of these sections. Now, they get these unspent points, but let's say down here, I want extra dexterity for this character. I would click the plus here. For the next character I would play as, they would still have unspent points. They wouldn't have a point spent in dexterity. They might not even have dexterity as their core because that they would be a different class. They might have a different core stat. So everybody gets six unspent points and each character you get to specifically choose what Paragon points you want to put where. So you choose all those. Ooh, critical hit chance. Tempting. But notice they're really small increases. So you need a lot of Paragon levels to gain more. Now, if you don't have the expansion like I do, you'll gain Paragon experience at level 60. If you do have the expansion, you will keep all your Paragon points, but you're going to not earn any more Paragon experience until you get to level 70. So social features have been added. You can create clans where people can join. Uh, you can create communities and the user interface has been changed. So those are the major changes for those of us without the expansion. So skills have been revamped and skill slots are changed and all that other wonderful stuff. Uh, you see the stuff for level 70 that is for the expansion, but you don't get to see it uh, and things like that. So you can play through the story normally if you want to go start a character from scratch and play through. It's a whole new game to you. The loot system's changed. The way it, the way you play hasn't changed, but it has, uh, if or arguably, been improved. I sorry, I accidentally caught a glimpse of general chat. Leave one. Hey, it works just like wow. And suddenly the game is improved a hundred percent. I might have to bug out what they're saying because I don't approve. Anyway, uh, that's me getting distracted. That pretty much wraps up what the changes are for those of you folks who don't have the expansion. Those of you that do have the expansion, you now have access to a new character, the class to play as, the Paladin, I think? The Crusader, I'm sorry. They're called the Crusader. You will have access to a new, uh, a new profession character because if you remember if you haven't played the game or if you it's been a while you might remember artisans i have a blacksmith and i've got a gem artisan somewhere else a gem maker well there's a new artisan i think they're called the mystic and i think they re-roll the random stats of an item and then there's other stuff like of course a new act of content that you can play through so for those of us without the expansion, like I said, it's a whole new game. I suggest if the, this is a game you gave up on because of the auction house, because of the way the loot system worked, or just because you didn't like all the features and you thought it was kind of dumb, I would suggest giving it another shot. Download it, install it, give it a try. This game, uh, I've always had the unpopular opinion that Diablo 3 is almost a complete imp improvement over Diablo 2. And I think this actually it improves my point. But anybody could, it could argue, well, it took them so long to fix this stuff, I don't care anymore. And that's your prerogative, and I totally understand. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you maybe in-game with the new 2.0 of Diablo 3.